came up with a system that I think will work better than trying to do this manually it is a small, it's essentially a small hobby fuel pump. And what I've got here is I will take one thing and put it in well number seven. And it's made to fit very, very snug or very tight into the well. So push down as best you can. The other two, put it in the back tank, of course, because it's going to be pushing dye out and water out. As I said, it hooks to a 9 volt battery. Uh, I'm not sure what you'll have available. Uh, hopefully, something comparable to this. Pretty much a small hobby type battery. It's a little bit noisy, but I found it works pretty well. And then what I did there was I just primed it by pulling water out of the back tank, turn it in reverse, and then I'm going to put it on forward. And as I said, it's a little bit noisy, but it pumps very well out of the aquifer. And in fact, in this case, you're seeing some comeback from number seven. I'll make my adjustments, my recharge, so I can see the impact. I'm going to take this liner, the dye in this liner, pour it out into the do the same with this one. I'm going to close, well, I'm not going to close it, close it slightly. It's a little more open than I want it. You can tell because my water table is so high. There it goes. And with this the combination of this recharge here and, of course, dye coming into the evaporation pond and well number seven pumping at a fairly high rate, you can see what's starting to happen. I can also inject more green dye into my underground storage tanks that are leaking. They'll take a little longer to get over there. And I'm going to put blue dye. I'm going to get a few things going here just so you can see what I'm talking about. Enough blue dye in the above ground storage tank so we can see it. And actually, what's happening because I've got this. Um, recharge channel here that is the you're not seeing it through the front here. See it's starting to appear over here. I'm going to turn the recharge off for a minute. There's that blue dye starting to form. It was simply tra not traveling along the face of the simulator. It was traveling a little bit behind. You can see it now over there appearing. And finally, let's get a red trace. Out of well number of three. And number two. And you'll note one thing I mentioned earlier about this thing gets in the way. Notice I just knocked it back. That's what I don't like about this canopy. Let's turn our recharge here back on just slightly. As I said, you'll get used to how much is appropriate. We can see a few things. The blue dye, because I didn't have recharge coming in, it was traveling along the top. Note that, as I said, even though this is pumping at a high rate, it's pulled down slightly, but it's not going to be pulled enough until I introduce that recharge. While the green dyes that had the recharge going earlier, and the red dyes, 
are clearly moving into, into the path of that well, pumping well. Number two, which would normally have gone below number seven, will indeed rise up to the bottom of number seven. And of course beyond the well you can also see some impact being drawn back in, some of it being traced and going into the river through the recharge. You get your, as you're pumping well as you would always get, your uh, divide point at which it goes this way or back towards the well. Beautiful blue trace coming this way. This is again that residual without the recharge. This is with the recharge event coming in through here and through here. And we can see all number seven pumping beautiful traces coming down. Impacts from very high in the aquifer actually. Because that clay layer ends right here, it's not preventing the dye from moving downward as it is over on this side of the model. Which was the effect you asked us to demonstrate. If I were to, uh, I could do a couple things. I can, I can recharge this at a much higher rate. I don't necessarily recommend that. What you're going to start doing is flooding everything. Or completely turn it off. And you'll see the change in the flow rates. You'll also see with only this being three quarter on, you're going to see uh, draining of the aquifer. It might not be obvious in the video. If you are close to the simulator, I can see it up here starting to happen. We're actually dewatering the aquifer. We're taking water out at a faster rate that's coming in through a recharge over here. And so you can talk about over pumping an aquifer, taking out too much water that doesn't, is not as much as coming in through precipitation events. And I see it starting to happen. The water table is starting to fall. You can see it really dropping in there. These wells are starting to drop. Uh, number three, because perch is actually really not dropping that much. The recharge right here, keeping the water level high right here, but then it drops off very quickly. As you can see right here, down towards that well. Um, and I'll see if I can put some dye. I don't know if number eight is dried or not, but let's try and find out. Yeah, number eight is pretty much dried out. It's caught in the cone of depression of that well. So well number eight is completely dry. It's caught it within that curve. And see watering. You can kind of see a trace of it, right? It's hard to see though. You can pump other wells. Do the same thing. And you can pull this out while it's on. It may lose its prime. This particular well, number eight, isn't as quite of a tight of fit. So I get a little air. I'm getting a lot of air at the moment. Just try and get it down in there as best you can. I'm gonna get a little bit wet. So it slides down there a little easier. There it goes. And what you're seeing, there's a lot of air in the thing slipping through. Um, it's because I'm not getting a tight seal, a little bit of air. But you're still seeing the traces come along. You're probably also seeing, since it's near the top of the aquifer, it's drawing air through the bottom. If I were to open this again and provide a little bit of recharge, you can see the water level rising. Should get a little less air there. If I hold it down, it also helps, because I'm closing off the air gap right there. It's kind of hard to do a demonstration, though, while you're holding it. But if I were to introduce dye into the unlined evaporation pond, we should draw it into well number eight. And again, I'm going to turn off this additional recharge in these two areas. And I want it to move along this kind of a path, along here, to see if it's drawn into number eight. So I'll die into number four. should see that starting to draw in there. Well number four should pass. It may be drawn up a little bit. I'm not totally sure at this point. Uh, 
you've got a lot of water moving through this aquifer. There's a lot of pressure, especially once this clay layer ends and the pressure from this coarser material starts to come up. It's hard for this to overcome that and be pulled into here because the water, just so much water is pulled in from all directions. Now included with the simulator is uh, a syringe system, typical what you find in our standard models. You can pump wells using this. Not a problem. You won't get as dramatic of an impact. It'll draw, but you really won't see the trace changes, and you'll have to empty it into the back, as you will with the electric pump. You can see a small trace down, although a lot of it did pass over the top of it, only small traces into that well. But I could pump number seven for a long time and never really see much of an impact even though this die trace is moving right across in front of it. I'm catching a little bit there. So watch the dramatic difference if I were to plug that one in number seven. Then we put it back in number eight. You know, I'm curious whether it'll catch this. Most of it is passing. I see a light trace here. It may not be obvious in the video. There's a light trace going up into that well, but a very small amount of it. Most of it is passing by. Just can't draw enough water. There it goes. Now if I press it in and get those air bubbles out of there, there we go. You can see the aquifer dewatering again. I'll put this back in number seven. I should see a nice little drop and trace there. This one rises up to it. And of course we can pump other wells. Number six, which this is a fairly small aquifer down here, so I would imagine it'll all but dry that one up. Yeah, look at these wells drop. Significant impact. significant impact on that well. Not so much number one because it's in the recharge area. Number five, definitely. Number ten, the artesian stopped flowing. Again, because it's a fairly small aquifer down here and it's confined, it's easy to see significant drop in a well, although we didn't see significant drops in any adjacent well. That's showing that it is indeed confined and although connected at certain points, it's mostly separate from the rest of the model. Okay. And the batter just came disconnected, so that one, whoops, the battery's now reconnected. Let's stop that from happening. I don't want water to shoot all over the place. That shows the basic operations of this custom simulator. Um, it is designed to do a lot of things, to do a lot of demonstration, and certainly could do a lot more uh, features than what I've shown here. And as you use it, you'll probably discover a lot of those additional features. In the next section, I'll go over the cleanup of, of the simulator. Cleaning the simulator is really not all that difficult. Uh, much like our standard models, the, the key to, to cleaning it is really getting the dyes out of the front aquifer, aquifer compartment and flushing them back into the back reservoir, which then you can hook a hose up to that valve I showed you earlier in the back and drain it out. Um, as you can see, we have some residual dyes both in the wells and then a little bit in these uh, evaporation sump ponds and some in the aquifer itself. 